advanced options on it. So that's kind of cool. I can also change the width of the lines around it. I can add more if I want to and make it a little thicker. Or I can go ahead and just come back here to the standard one point. You can also change the color of the shading and the border around it. Maybe you want to change it to a different color. Not a problem. Easy to do. You also can change the page border. Now what this will do is it'll actually put, instead of just around your paragraph, it'll add a box around the entire page or a drop shadow or the 3D effect or even custom, anything you want to do. You can also add art where which this will be, instead of the border around the page being a line, you can add apples. And uh, I think those are candy corn. Uh, there's cake and uh, I you know maybe party. I, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> you, maybe you can send me an email to Chris at CBT Nuggets. Uh, but you can add a, a page border of art around it. It's kind of fun. But that applies, notice, to, to the whole document. Or you can do it to this section, the first page only of your document, or all except the first page. Maybe your title page you don't want it, but all those subsequent ones you do. So these are some selections you can do. We'll kind of show you this on when we do page formatting. And then there's shading. Shading is where you allow the shading inside the box. Now right now, there's no color. You can select colors if you want and the patterns. What I usually do is you can do solid which will change it to all black and then the font um, the font colors the text will be white so it, in fact I'll go ahead and do that show you go ahead and click OK and I change it out notice it's all black and then it changed to white so we can come back up here let's change our borders and shading and uh, we'll say that uh, on the shading there I don't want it solid instead I like adding like around a 15 percent this is really nice now when I do the 15 percent check this out Look at that. Look at how it pops out at somebody. It's just like, ooh, pay attention to this. This is very important. In fact, if you're reading any manuals, they usually do things like this to draw attention to tips or to perhaps uh, something that's important, maybe a gotcha on an exam. If you're taking a certification exam, they'll tell you about that. Now, you can also just understand, if I you know, select this, I can also come up here on the borders and shading, and I can change it color. So now, in fact, I could maybe do a yellow color. So now it's going to have this yellow at 15%. So if I want, I can click on that, and now notice it come, gives me this nice uh, yellow uh, grayscale pattern. Or if I want, I can undo that. I can come up here and just say clear, but then add maybe a light green to it. You know, the colors show up, and I go ahead and click OK, and then now, great. And if I want, I can even highlight the text within this. Now, this is kind of cool. Remember, we did this. I can come over here to my highlighter and say, I want uh, kind of a, oh, let's add that red right there. Now, boy, if Jeremy doesn't know where the telephone number to call and to make it right is, yeah, he's not looking. Because now we've gone in and we've highlighted and we've changed the formatting of these paragraphs to really draw attention to what it is that we're trying to point out. Quite a lot to look at when we're talking about formatting our paragraphs and setting them apart. And, you know, quite honestly, this is a great tool for you if you are putting together reports or things that you want people to pay attention to. You can use the power of indents where you can say, well, here's where I want my line to start at the first line and then change it for the second and third and subsequent lines with those indents. Or with alignment, you might say, I want all my text to kind of be centered drawing people's attention to right in the middle of the page. You can do that with alignment. Then there's paragraph spacing. Well, remember, not only can you set the spacing between lines of text within a paragraph, but you can also go ahead and set paragraph spacing before and after. This is great if you have one particular paragraph out of a whole dozen of them that you want to kind of stand apart. Well, use some alignment and paragraph spacing, and it'll look like that's the center of your document. Pretty cool. And then, of course, borders and shading. If you really want just put someone's eyes to be drawn to something, add a border, a box, or maybe a drop shadow to that paragraph, and then add a little shading in a different color, and people are their eyes are going to go boom right to that. And they're going to say, wow, this must be important. I wonder what they want to talk about here. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Microsoft Word 2007, Tabs and Columns. When you get right down to it, tabs, you know, they're part of paragraph formatting, but they're slightly different. They're, they're not indents, but yet they act sometimes like indents. And then, of course, columns. Columns are almost their own little animal. I mean, yes, they are 
formatted on the page and you're dividing text into different columns, but they're not exactly there. So we're going to give tabs and columns their own nugget video. Most of the people that I talk to that use Word 2007 or even former uh, uses of the Office products really just don't understand what tabs and columns can do for them. They might play around with them, but it's really the power user that can take advantage of the different types of tab stops. I mean, you have literally five different types of tabs you can use. And then we're also going to take a look at how we create and even adjust columns to really take your page and make it look very professional. Believe it or not, tabs, originally, from what I've been told, come from the old typewriters and, and the printers that used to have it, where if you wanted to hit your tab key or move the carriage that had the print head over to a certain spot on your on horizontally, you'd put a little metal tab to stop it as it moved across. So if you hit that tab key, it would slide over until it hit that little tab that, little tab that stuck out. And so that's why they call them tab stops. Well, I, you know, that could be true. Uh, we might want to do a little uh, Wikipedia check on that. But that's what I was told. And what really what you're doing here is essentially the same. You are now moving your cursor to these individual tab stops. Now, what this allows you to do is align lines of text in different locations across the page. Now, of course, the easiest way to do this is to go up here onto your horizontal ruler and assign the tab stops onto your ruler so that way every time you hit the tab key which you see on your uh, keyboard right now in fact go ahead and look at it see it see the tab key and what this allows you to do is when you hit that key it will move to the next tab stop on the ruler now the each of these tab stops also have different behaviors and we'll see that here in just a minute but you'll notice you don't have to set them up automatic or you know by yourself automatically word 2007 sets up default tab marks at every half inch and you can see them there are these little gray little marks right here underneath the arrow this is your default tab stops notice they're every half inch here's 0.5 here's one inch so that's number two every half inch you have these default uh, tab stops now what this does is it allows you anytime you hit that tab key to move your cursor over so let's say I wanted to come down here and I want to add another paragraph here, so I'll go ahead and hit the Enter key. And let's say that I want to add somebody's name here and align it up to an extension for their department. So I might say, if you have any further questions about purchasing an instrument, contact our sales at the extensions below. So I go ahead and hit enter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type somebody's name. I'll say Bob and then I'm going to hit the tab key. Now watch what happens. It's going to move my cursor to the next tab stop which is at a half inch. One. And then I want to move it one more to the one inch mark. Two. And then I'll put in maybe Laura as one of my salespeople. Hit the tab twice. One, two. It moves it over. And then we put in James Conrad, salesman extraordinaire. Tab, tab. And then, of course, the grand poobah, Dan Charbonneau, is right there. So now I've got all of these guys that are my salespeople. Now when I hit enter, I'm going to want to then put the telephone number or the extension number and make sure it lines up. Well, this is easy because I'm at the beginning. So if I go ahead and say 4565, it'll line up. Now watch what happens, though. Instead of having to hit the space bar and go all the way over, if I tab, tab, I can now go right to where Laura is um, on, right on this tab stop right here on one inch, and I'm going to say 4566, six, tab, tab, 4567 for James, tab, tab, and now Dan is 4568. Look at how it lines it up to the left of that tab stop. Now to see this, all I need to do is come up here and click on the paragraph markings and the formatting symbols. Look. There it is, Bob with two tabs. Tab, tab, over to Laura. Tab, tab, over to James. Tab, tab, over to Dan. And then I have a paragraph return. Same thing happens here. So that's what these tab marks look like in your formatting, the tab stops. Now, you might think to yourself, okay, that's great. I can just do tabs, right? And that's all I do. And that lines up to the left. Well, au contraire, mon frere. Tabs, believe it or not, you don't just have to stay with the default tabs. You have custom tabs. Now, I know that during this video, 
the series, the, all the nuggets that you've been watching, you've been noticing this little mark up here, and you go, oh, ooh, I wonder what that is. Well, believe it or not, this is where you set what type of tab, custom tab, you want. Now, all you need to do is click this tab button here until the type of the tab stop you want appears. There's more than one tab stop? Oh, absolutely. You've got the left tab, which you can see right here. Mac, the, it looks like a little L, doesn't it? L. You also have a center tab. Look at this upside down T. That aligns it to the center of the text within the stop. So in other words, here on Laura, the center of Laura and the center of this number would line up. Same thing here over here for James. Then of course, you've got the right. That looks like the uh, you got the other you know bracket there on the the right hand side. This aligns the text up to the right hand. So in other words, it pushes the text up to the right. So everything lines up on the right. So Dan here would align up to the end of the number. So just a little bit different. Now it doesn't stop there. You also have a decimal tab. The decimal tab looks a little familiar. You got your center tab right. You want to center it, but instead you want to center it on a on a little number. So this is kind of cool. And then, of course, you've got the infamous bar tab. Now, I know what you're thinking. What, Chris? You can go down to the local saloon and uh, put a, some drinks and peanuts over onto, onto a bar tab? No, not that type of bar tab. No, what we're talking about is a bar tab where it draws a vertical bar that's aligned with the stop, and it goes down the paragraph containing that insertion point. We'll show you that here in just a second. But how do you put these in? Well, you simply select, and by the way, you can also insert um, the, the hanging indents and uh, the left indents right here as well. You can insert those. But let's go here just to um, a standard left tab. Now, what you've done is once you've inserted it, you might think, oh, do I click and drag it? No, because every time you click, it just changes it. So let's go back to left here. Instead, what you do is anywhere on the bar, you click and hold, and you can drop this left tab anywhere you want. Now, there, you're going to see something interesting here. When I click right here and drop it, you'll notice in the paragraph that I'm in, it deletes all of the, or clears all of the default tabs to the left of it, but it keeps them to the right. Now, notice what that did to my particular uh, thing here. Oh, man, that doesn't work. That's horrible. That doesn't what I wanted at all. So what would you have to do? Well, you'd have to come over here, select it, and move it. Notice how you have it right here. Now, by the way, if you take it off, anywhere off the thing, it removes that tab. So let me go ahead and start on another paragraph here. Now watch it. So now if I click over here, and I do a tab at three inches, watch. It took out all the default tabs right now. So I'm here. Watch what happens when I hit tab. Boom. All the way to three inches in. And here's my left tab. So kind of cool. Now, the other one that's nice that I like is, of course, the decimal tab. Now, why would you use a decimal tab? Well, when you want to show numbers and you want to align them up. So let's go ahead and we'll hit enter. We're on a new one. And uh, I want to remove this one off of here, so I'll take that off. But I want to add this particular one. Let's, we'll just put one right here. There we go. I had to grab it. And I hit tab. Watch what happens. It goes there. Now if I say, let's say I want to add $12 and 36 cents. Notice it separates off onto this particular decimal point. And when I hit enter and I move down, I still have my tab here and I tab over. Look how it lines up on my decimal. So now if I do $125 and 65 cents, it lines up. And if I tab over and I do one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, point 32, it lines everything up to that particular decimal onto that tab stop. Pretty sweet. Now this is kind of fun. Now the bar, the bar one, if I go ahead and do this one and I insert it, notice I have the bar, and let's say I put a bar here at three inches in. See the bar that showed up there? And so when I tab over to it, and I'm tabbing across, and I get to, now that bar tab, it's going to put it right at that insertion point. So everything will be lining up. And if I hit enter, notice how it's dropping down for each one of these paragraphs, that line right there. So this is a vertical bar that's going to be aligned with that stop down the paragraph. And you can use this to maybe line up certain things. You could add it right here so it would line up up against here. I usually don't use it too much in that 
manner, I usually use tables, which help me line up, and then I can box things in. But your mileage may vary.